we, we finish out of 2019 as pioneers. We finish out a year of hard work, a year of preparing Team USA. I'd like to say a big congratulation to the first inaugural team that participated in the World Championship here in Seoul, Korea. They did a fantastic job of not only participating, but exchanging and interacting with the international athletes. And I think that's what it means to be a national federation. It's to represent your country. And when you go to represent your country and you wear those stars and those stripes, participating with everyone else from around the world, it gives you a sense of pride and a sense of purpose as well as an origin of where you're coming from. Uh, I'm Lance Mudd, I'm the sport director for the United States Esports Federation. Uh, we're here today in Seoul, South Korea uh, on the last day of the 11th Esports World Championship and the first time that the USCF sent USA Esports to compete here. There was already this international body, the IESF, which is the International Esports Federation, that had already been operating since 2009 and they already had over 30 countries involved and so we started the process of trying to become one of the countries to represent the United States as no one was really doing this and after a long process and after getting accepted as a full member last year here we are today where we're now a member and able to send the first team to the 11th eSports World Championship. My name is Hua Lu but I'm also better known as Anakin. I am 28 years old and I'm from Atlanta, Georgia and I'm actually the Tekken 7 representative for USA eSports at the ISF Worlds this year in Seoul. American Tekken players definitely have a lot of pride in their country and what they're playing for. Tekken players, and especially in America, want to prove that we're one of the best countries in the world for it. We've always been third, almost third, barely scratching second, and now in this version of Tekken 7, we're there, and this is our time. Anakin versus Jimmy J. Tran. This matchup, obviously, amongst two of the best players in the United States. It's gone back and forth historically. Jimmy J. Tran versus Anakin, California versus Atlanta, Georgia. Oh, dude. I think it's amazing for someone to represent their country in video games, where they're playing in front of over 10,000 people, and they have millions of people watching them online. And for us as the USCF to come here and partner with WSOE 7 to find out who's going to be that Tekken player, we hope that we can bring home the gold medal. For me to qualify to go to Seoul, Korea would be great because I would get to solidify my place within the Tekken world. If I were to get the ticket to Seoul, Korea, it would mean just about everything to me because we were kind of missing an American representative. You know, I'm from Atlanta, so when I compete either domestically or internationally, I'm always representing my hometown and I'm always already representing America against international level competition. And now, like, that we're at our peak, it would be like the perfect time to represent America at an ISF play this year. Winner gets the USA spot. Already these guys going at each other. Uh, 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 uh. Anakin, Jimmy with the down forward two one to the closeout game number one. Jimmy J. Tran. Not enough to kill at the mid. We'll do it. Back to close it out. You know it. Seven golden letters for Anakin. One more game to determine who's going to be the U.S. rep. Loser goes home. That's the end of the road for somebody. This is crazy. All oh, Northern Cross counter hit. Oh. Oh, he's gonna be the U.S. rep and he's gonna stay in to the top three. The official representative of Team USA in Seoul, Korea. We're really happy that Anakin qualified as a USA Esports Tekken 7 member. I'm really excited for him and I'm really excited for the whole United States and esports as a whole as it develops internationally. To represent the United States is something that really means a lot to me. I'm looking forward to seeing what happens later on this year.
USA Esports ran a qualifier with WSOE 7 in which we did our Tekken qualifier and we were able to go and have two great Americans compete for the spot for the USA team. And Anakin pulled through in the end and he's one of our members for the Tekken team of USA Esports. We also ran a qualifier where we had uh, PES and we had Anas who came and represented us in PES and he got to see some of his friends here who he's seen in other global competitions and this one was the first time that he was able to see all the countries together playing against each other and he really enjoyed that and it was really cool to have. So today was kind of like the first full day in Seoul after being back in Thailand. It was kind of just a wind down time. You know, I've, this is definitely like the 10th time I've been to Korea, so I'm kind of like a regular here. It was more or less just uh, getting getting used to being around here. Um, I was doing some research earlier on the new characters this morning before we had uh, breakfast and everything. Uh, got my badge, got my uniform, got my citizen watch, you know, I'm good to go. Got the schedule, so I'm going to be competing tomorrow. and. Uh, yeah, it was just kind of like decompressing. Still thinking about last weekend's events, you know, everything's happening so fast and we got to jump right into this tournament. So a lot is going on. I'm just trying to make sure that I stay ahead of everything and uh, am ready to go, you know, when the event starts. And it wasn't until like I went to the arcades for the first time and fought against the local guys there where I felt like, you know, this was a game that I wanted to really, really learn and get better at. You know, it was like when they kept beating me up. It wasn't something that I could handle for very long, even as a little kid, you know, I was always competitive. So it wasn't, you know, it wasn't, I wasn't going to give up until you know, I was, became the best player in the arcade. I wasn't going to give up until I became the best player in the city, the state, and I, I moved my way up. And here we are. The first day I played, I started it very well. You know, I won my first game against China and then tied the second game against Georgia, which put me in a very good position to qualify to the second round. There was a little bit of stress because of uh, the environment and, and you know, you, you're representing a country, your country like, like United States, you, you, wanna, you wanna be at the top level and really give your best at least that you don't regret after that you did not give uh, what you're capable of. Maybe I took a few bad decisions in during the tournament, but as of as of performing and, and giving my best, I think I did yes. Um, honestly, my mindset is, is always come to win because uh, if you don't have that in mind, you won't perform at your best. It's something you know. It's a, it's a learning curve, so so you wanna you wanna gain as much as you can from the experience, and at the same time learn from the other. Uh, countries because each each city each country has their own style of playing the pressure is on from the beginning so I think it will help a lot in future tournaments for sure I remember just coming straight from the world finals and that was a long weekend all in itself you know uh, and I never really after the world tournament traveled straight into another event you know not nonetheless like go to another country to compete so a lot of it was just kind of like a blur just getting in here having a day ahead of time, you know, a day in advance to kind of rest up, get, get some practice in, kind of see where the Tekken world is at because usually after the world final, there's like a big shake up, new updates were coming. So it was kind of like a very, very busy time for Tekken. And with me just like spending a whole day traveling, it was kind of like, you know, very, very tiring. I do remember that, but uh, it's always good to be back in Seoul. I've got a lot of friends who are always down to hang out and kind of show me around, take care of anything I need. So it was, even though I was still like halfway across the world, it was kind of like returning home after a long weekend in Bangkok. Where I remember like the group selection stage. Um, it was kind of funny because the United States, since they were going in alphabetical order, picked last. And I kind of didn't really have a choice. You know, it was all up to chance. I was in a group with uh, a lot of small countries I could imagine as far as like Tekken goes. Uh, I got to fight against like Jamaica, Tunisia, and Namibia. And I think that that was probably the most interesting and cool part about this whole experience for me is because, you know, I'm the biggest Tekken nerd around. And to travel here and meet players from different parts of the world that you never really ever get to hear about, talk to them a little bit, hear their stories about Tekken, hear how it's like back home. I mean, those are the things that, you know, those are the reasons why I like competing and traveling. And, you know, the ISF was kind of like perfect for me to be able to do all of that. 
Yeah, so day two was kind of like the, the, the serious day, you know, I feel like a lot of the competitors here kind of, or the people that are watching the event knew of the strong names that were competing. We had like uh, a lot of names that scored a lot of points this year, earned a lot of points in the ranking on the Tekken World Tour. So like you had the Take, Dojin from the Philippines, Ni from Korea, you know, he's one of the national heroes for Tekken here. And you know, have myself, uh, you know, uh, so there were some big names along with a lot of like hungry underdogs that were ready to kind of like take us uh, head on. We finished the group stages. I played my final match in group stages against Namibia. He showed up a little late, overslept, he said. Uh, I felt bad that he had to run in and kind of rush straight into the match. I'm sure that had a lot affected his gameplay a lot. Um, but afterwards, you know, I finished first in the groups, went undefeated, and then the real kind of stuff began. You know, I had to face other players who advanced from their groups. So in the round of 16, I fought against uh, Chinese Taipei. You know, it's so cool to be able to name all these different nations and you know to say that I fought against the best players from there it was just really unique really cool for me and we, you know we had a lot of fun afterwards talked about the match and uh, you know that's all it's about just getting better and ultimately I fell short in the round of eight against Ni. Nee. I feel like all year long that's kind of like been the common narrative of just the, the theme of all year just me versus Ni. Nee. Ever since we started off, we faced off at Combo Breaker. We had some really good sets over the over the last few months, but unfortunately, this all one also ended in a loss. Um, but not to take away from Ni, nee also he, you know, he's a, he's world class. He's been there, done that, and we've done a lot of battles over the years. You know, it was a good learning experience, and I think that it was a good like test or a good you know way to close out the year, kind of learn a couple new things and test myself. Uh, you know, against him, it was a good challenge, and you know, and that kind of makes me look a little bit more forward to the next year. Now that I think I have a better idea and a better understanding of how to approach that player matchup, you know, it's always fun to play against him. Considering you know how when I was a lot, lot, lot younger, he was still a legend or a legend in the making, and we would always watch his videos back home. And now that we're we're coming face to face all the time and like deep, deep, you know, far in the tournaments, I think that's really cool, and that's a cool story in itself. I think that like uh, before I even entered the match, a lot of the big question was what character was was going to use. You know, all year long, Ni had been known for in the playing a lot of different characters in Tekken World Tour based on what you know kind of matchup he thinks would give him the best advantage. And it's definitely no secret that you know I didn't have time to practice some of the new characters that literally just came out two days ago. And on the other hand, he has been really really grinding out some Leroy and some Ganryu and. I felt kind of fortunate that he chose to go with a character that I was, you know, very, very experienced against. And I think that that made me a lot more comfortable going into the match. You know, it probably would have been a different story if he had picked one of those new guys. And then once that the match kicked off, it was just a battle of wits. You know, he's fundamentally solid. I'm fundamentally solid. And when you, when you have a matchup where the players are familiar with each other, the characters are no strangers, then you just have good old fashioned, you know, normal good ass Tekken. And I think that that's the reason why the crowd got so hyped because like when you remove all of the crazy stuff that goes on in Tekken, you know, it becomes very cool to watch two players just going back and forth with the mind game. And that's kind of like what I specialize in. So I had a lot of fun playing him, even though I lost, but you know, like I said, always gonna look forward to the next one. Last day, um, I, I played against uh, China Macau. Um, I made some adjustment, I changed the team that I usually play because I felt I did not perform well in the last game of the group. Um, I think it was a poor decision uh, because I did not know my players very well. So if I sticked with, I, with what I know, I think I would have I had much better result. Um, you know, overall, I, I only lost in the, in the playoffs and, and I lost by very, very minimum score. So the margins were the, the levels were very close and, and it just shows that anyone could have won the game and won maybe the whole thing. The, the people that are involved in esports are true people and their objective is to be happy. So interestingly enough here in the World Championship the winner was from Iran for the uh, PES and the guy who gave him the medal was from Israel. Now, of international conflicts, we know that Iran doesn't recognize Israel as a country. The guy from Iran was super happy to receive that medal, and he stood there with the rest of the competitors. So, sports breaks borders, but eSports is breaking them while you're sitting at home. eSports has no borders. 
Esports is something truly global. And as long as we can make the proper educational principles and, and armoring, and that's one of the things we do, right? The armor on horse, armoring the youth, preparing them for life. The United States Esports Federation applies the U.S. Center for Safe Sports policy at all of our qualifiers and events for all of our athletes, making sure that all the managers, the, the officials, the players and the leagues work with the U.S. Center for Safe Sports protocols so that we can ensure that we're protecting our athletes to the best of their ability. The Education Commission aims at uniting the academics and the stakeholders within esports so that we can come with an objective of how we can unify and educate the esports community. This has been one of the main objectives that we have done over 2019 and we look forward to rolling it out in 2020 of how we can better protect and educate our esports athletes. We are here in Orlando, Florida, and we are blessed and so excited to be here. This is the time, this is the place. Play some Mario Kart, play some Super Smash Brothers Ultimate, and show us who really is the boss today. brought here in part with b Kin 365 premiere events and also we're here from AAU Esports. Oh no, Princess Peach was in first, now all the way back in fourth place, gets hit as well, now in fifth. It's just a game, you just gotta try your best and if you end up winning, you win, if you don't, you don't. Just try your best and see what happens. Yeah, so what we do here as the United States Esports Federation isn't just um, sending athletes to go and compete here. We also work with other countries and work together with their national Olympic committees or with their international delegates on working uh, towards us prospering together and moving forward as a global movement, united as one. So we hold a general meeting where all the delegates get to meet together and we actually get to vote and we get to have a discussion on what we want to do with esports. And so we also select our next world championship and it will be really exciting that next year in 2020 we'll be in Israel with the Israeli Esports Association that will be hosting the 12th Esports World Championship and we're really excited to go ahead and move forward there and send in our second team to go and compete. We hope to increase participation in the United States to make sure that the best U.S. athletes are being represented here at the annual Esports World Championship. In doing so, we hope to have more live events in the United States and work with all the partners in the United States on completing this main objective. 2019 has been a fantastic year. We had Team USA participate in the World Championship for the first time ever. We didn't get any medals, unfortunately, this year, but that only motivates us to do better qualification for the next year and come back with a full team to ensure that we get a proper result. So next year, the United States Esports Federation is also looking at sending a full team uh, to this event here at the 12th Esports World Championship. Sending a full team will really show and put USA on the map that we're here to dominate and also show everyone what the United States is all about. Uh, certain teams and those game titles will be selected soon, and I hope that we can announce that to the world and also start working with the United States, all the event organizers, athletes, and leagues on how we can best sport these athletes to go and compete and represent us against all these other countries. In the next year, we're going to be running uh, our general meeting, which will be the United States Esports Federation's second general meeting, but the first one that will be live at Esports Arlington in Texas. We're aiming at uniting all the esports stakeholders and inviting all of the biggest players and also all of the local communities so that we can come and have a discussion on what the United States Esports Federation should be doing as we go forward uh, past 2020 and beyond. Uh, we'll also be running a qualifier at the same time, which will be really great and we're going to run it in partnership with Esports Arlington and Esports Travel Summit uh, from the North Stars Meeting Group. And we're really excited about that and I cannot wait to go and see what's going to happen there uh, in June 2020. The objective is to have all esports stakeholders in the United States in one room together, united as one as we move forward to promote esports in the United States and around the world. We can never lose sight that athletes are the reason why we exist and if it wasn't for the athlete, much of this wouldn't be possible. It is very imperative that we must do everything to protect the athlete 
and advance the esports athlete interest and participation among games. As the cycles of games and frequency of games come out at a faster rate, health is a big issue that needs to be addressed within the esports athlete. We aim at working with all those involved on ensuring the best practices to tackle these issues. We want to ensure that all esports athletes are participating in a safe gaming environment. That's why we look forward to collaborating with publishers on meeting these objectives and goals. We would like to thank all of our partners throughout the year in 2019. We are very appreciative of their support and partnership with the USCF and we look forward to 2020 and beyond.